Uh, obviously, we're here uh, to address the public health crisis that has got on with the coronavirus uh, that is uh, changing uh, our world and our lives by the day. I want to first say uh, thank you to all the healthcare workers uh, who are doing their best to keep everybody safe and healthy. I want to thank Commissioner Mark Levine from the Vermont Department of Health and, of course, Governor Phil Scott for their leadership uh, during this time. Uh, I view this really as an opportunity um, for Vermonters to ask uh, me their questions, uh, to share their concerns, and really to act as a portal into state government uh, to give people the information and the answers they need uh, in order to best uh, protect themselves, uh, their family, and their livelihood. Uh, it seems like the news on, on the coronavirus changes every single day. Uh, it uh, is fast moving, it's dynamic, and reliable information uh, I think is incredibly important right now uh, for Vermonters uh, to make, again, those informed decisions uh, for themselves and their families. So please ask me your questions. Uh, I will do my best to answer those questions. I will do my best uh, to get you the information you need, again, to make those informed decisions. Uh, if I can't answer the question uh, here today, uh, I'll take your information. I'll give you my email address. Uh, and I will get back to you. Uh, so I really view this as office hours. I view this as, uh, uh, as a way to uh, listen to folks, to get people the information they need, uh, and to hold uh, office hours, albeit from my dining room kitchen uh, by virtue of uh, this virtual town hall. Let me first just give a quick overview over what the Attorney General's office has been doing uh, this past week. Um, obviously, our role uh, is consumer protection and public safety. Uh, and what we're hearing a lot about uh, from folks is price gouging and scams. And when you talk about what is price gouging, price gouging is when the price of essential goods or services is inflated during a market crisis. And we're hearing, hearing a lot about that from, from folks. Uh, the first thing I would tell people to do is to call by a consumer assistance program where we can track this information. We're reaching out to the larger retailers, not only in Vermont, but of course uh, in this country. And the number of CAP is 1-800-649-2424. Uh, 1-800-649-2424. So call my CAP office, my consumer assistance program. It's very helpful for us to, to uh, be able to identify trends. That gives us the evidence we need to take action. Uh, should we take action? Uh, but we can get you direct assistance that way. Uh, beware of scams. Anytime there's a crisis, people are going to try to financially benefit and rip you off. We know that, that's the story of the world. Uh, obviously, some of the scams we're starting to see uh, during this crisis are healthcare products, people promising that certain healthcare products uh, will be a cure uh, to the coronavirus. Uh, test kits uh, that are not test kits. Uh, charities, be very, very uh, aware of people who are of charity that uh, would relate to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Employer scams, everybody is working remotely. And so this is, a, this is an opportunity for these scammers to pretend that they're your employers to try to rip you off. Whatever you do, do not give out your personal information uh, over the computer. That is rule number one. Uh, I know we're getting questions already, which is great. I just want to highlight a couple things first. Uh, some of the actions that we've taken uh, is we've postponed uh, we postponed any government benefit cases. So if you receive government benefits, whether it's uh, reach up uh, Medicaid fuel assistance, uh, we have delayed those cases for 90 days based on my order, meaning that there will be no reduction 
or no termination of your benefits during that time. Uh, I reserve the right to revisit that if we get to 90 days and this crisis has not abated at all. I, during a crisis, let me be clear, nobody should lose their benefits. So whether it's three squares, uh, uh, the SNAP uh, food assistance program, which I want to note that we just won a preliminary injunction against the Trump administration to stop those cuts. Uh, whether it's reach up, whether it's Medicaid, whether it's fuel assistance, there's 20 over 20 different programs of benefits that Vermonters received. Nobody's going to lose their benefits during this crisis as long as I'm turning general, uh, or will they be reduced if those cases uh, are on uh, appeal right now? Obviously, uh, another major issue is how does government function uh, during a crisis and what is the law on open meetings? Uh, open meetings, transparency is essential to democracy. Uh, we can't erode uh, our democracy even during this time of public health crisis. Uh, we put out guidance about what an open meeting law uh, should look like during uh, this time. Obviously, electronic participation works. You can limit attendance. You have to have a physical location. Only one person needs to be there, obviously. Uh, and notice and posting requirements uh, may be waived during an emergency. Uh, but we have to uh, remember uh, that democracy and transparency uh, can't be left to the wayside during this crisis. Uh, as we go forward, I want to uh, direct people to my website at ago.vermont.gov. We have a COVID-19 resource uh, page up with a lot of helpful questions for employees and employers. Uh, obviously, our role, as I said earlier, is consumer protection. Small businesses, businesses that are consumer, con considered consumers under Vermont law. Uh, and a lot of folks, a lot of employees have questions, whether it's health care, whether it's unemployment insurance, uh, whether uh, what their rights are. Off. Uh, so we have a great resource on our website at ago.vermont.gov. Um, so let me, let me ask Jess uh, for some questions that are coming in. So Jess, what's, what's the first uh, Melody, question? Melody Reed. Hand sanitizer and so on is a reputable company. Okay, great question by uh, Melody. Uh, the question is, is there a number we can call to find out if a company is selling items online, such as hand sanitizer and so on, it's a reputable company. Uh, call my CAP office at 1-800-649-2424. We'll do the research for you. And that's a great question, Melody. Again, in a crisis, unfortunately, people are going to try to rip other people off. And you want to do your due diligence. And those essential goods, such as hand sanitizer, uh, the prices are being uh, jacked up. Um, so if you call us at 1-800-649-2424, uh, we can help you do the research and answer those questions. Uh, a lot of the uh, scams that we're seeing uh, have to do online, as Melody, your question su suggests. Uh, so we are reaching out to uh, different platforms, such as Facebook and Amazon, uh, to enlist them uh, in this fight. Uh, against scammers uh, to protect the public, to protect Vermonters, to protect people's livelihood so people are not losing their hard-earned money during this time trying to get essential goods. Uh, so Melody, thank you for that question. Uh, do we have another question? Uh, I see a question from uh, Tanisha that she is pregnant and working at uh, in the essential work field. Hmm. What is the state of Vermont uh, going to do about pregnant women who are in the work field? Uh, that's a great question. Um, if you, when we talk about workplace uh, protections, uh, my office has a civil rights division. Uh, the civil rights division would handle that question and I'm happy to get, to get a little bit more information from you, Tanisha necessary information you need. Uh, let me just kind of outline uh, uh, the field for uh, workplace protections. Uh, my office, the Civil Rights Office, we handle employment discrimination um, 
for the state of Vermont. Uh, somebody may be uh, being discriminated against by virtue of uh, being pregnant. That is a question uh, that we would handle at my civil rights unit. And Tanisha, if you email me at thomas.donovan, D-O-N-O-V-A-N, at vermont.gov, um, and if I can get a little bit more information from you, uh, I am happy to have an attorney reach out to you to help answer Donovan, uh, D-O-N-O-V-A-N, at vermont.gov, uh, to answer that question. So the Vermont Attorney General's Civil Rights Office would handle any employment um, question for any employee in the state of Vermont. However, if you are a state of Vermont employee, if you're, if you're a Vermont government employee like I am, I'm a state of Vermont government employee, uh, if there is a question about workplace uh, or employment related issues uh, and you're a state of Vermont employee, the Human Rights Commission uh, would be the person that would handle, would be the, or the entity that would handle your question. Um, so if you're, if you're a state of Vermont employee, like I am, I work for the state of Vermont, uh, the Human Rights Commission uh, is the organization that would handle your claim. When it comes to issues such as wages, such as earned sick time, such as unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, or workers' safety, the Vermont Department of Labor uh, has that jurisdiction. And all this information is on my web website, Again, ago.vermont.gov, Vermont spelled out. Uh, we have a COVID-19 resource page with drop-down boxes, a lot of helpful information. I also want to acknowledge that we are in, uh, in extraordinary times right now. And if you have a question that you need help with, email me. I will try to get you the, the information. I want to acknowledge that telling folks just to go to a website is not enough. So feel free, and I'll be very direct with folks. What I've been doing for most of the week is taking a lot of calls from folks with questions such as these. And then I'm getting on the phone, calling folks within state government, calling folks in my office, trying to get that information back to the person who called me again so they can make uh, the best decisions that they want to make for themselves. Um, so again, my email, thomas.donovan at vermont.gov. Um, so my office, the attorney general's office has employment juris jurisdiction for employees in the state of Vermont. If you work for the state of Vermont, uh, in terms of state of Vermont government, that's the human rights commission, uh, or the jurisdiction of whether it's wages, questions about wages, earned sick time, uh, unemployment insurance is the Vermont department of labor. As I said earlier though, if that's not good enough for you, email us with your specific question. We can't represent you, but we will help you get the information you need or put you in touch with somebody uh, who can answer your question. Again, I know these are extraordinary times and we want to go above and beyond uh, for our fellow Vermonters right now. I think we have another question here. Um, is there a current effort to collect and distribute home sewn masks? So there's another question here. Uh, is there a current effort to collect and distribute home sewn masks in Vermont? Uh, my short answer is I don't know. Um, I know that we have reached out to uh, different organizations in different fields uh, looking for this uh, type of protective medical equipment so we can get it to our essential workers in the healthcare industry who really need it right now. Um, but I don't know if there is a current effort to collect and distribute uh, home sewn masks in Vermont. Uh, other questions, I really encourage folks um, to reach out to me uh, to ask questions uh, or share their concerns. Uh, this is a great opportunity, uh, again, uh, to ask me anything you want uh, so we can get you the information you need to best protect yourselves or uh, uh, your family. And I'm getting another question here, I think, from my ABLE assistant. Do you have any thoughts on potentially pausing other collection actions by agencies like DOL or VT Department of Taxes? Okay, so the question is, if I heard it correctly, do, you have any uh, thoughts on do, do I have any thoughts on pausing collection actions um, uh, from was it? Department of Labor or Vermont Department of Taxes. From the Department of Labor or Vermont Department of Taxes. Uh, so the question is, should we delay collection efforts right now? 
my answer is yes, we should. Uh, look, people are being laid off. Uh, people are losing uh, their jobs. People are losing their livelihood. Uh, people are anxious about their their jobs if they continue to have one. People are anxious about uh, the money that's coming in, whether or not they have enough savings, um, whether or not they can even access money that they may have uh, saved or invested. So anything we can do right now, uh, I think, to pause uh, collection actions uh, against Vermonters is something I would support. Uh, this is a crisis. We need to get out of this, and we're all in this together. We also have to understand that not only is this a public health crisis, which of course it is, uh, but uh, this is an economic crisis. And we got to make sure that people have resources in order to put food on their table, in order to pay their mortgage or their rent, uh, in order to make sure that they are able to survive. That's not an overstatement. And so when you talk about collecting for uh, unpaid uh, taxes or late taxes or penalties, uh, we need to stay that. We need to hit a pause button on that. And we need to make sure that people have the basics to survive right now. So the answer to your question is yes, I would support postponing any sort of collection action. I've asked uh, my office to see whether or not uh, we are as part of the state of Vermont, any part, part of any collection action. Uh, uh, I don't have the answer to that question yet. I don't believe we are. If we are, we are not going to do that work against a Vermonter or frankly against a, another company right now for the time being. Uh, people need cash. Uh, I understand that. Now, people need to, as I said, put food on their table. Uh, people need to pay their rent. Uh, people need to be able to pay their mortgage. These are the basics. And when we talk about these issues, uh, about the basics, when we talk about putting food on the table, when we talk about paying your mortgage, when we talk about paying your rent, uh, we got to understand, as I said, we're all in this together. So I certainly support uh, protecting tenants right now. We also have to support uh, uh, landlords who have a, uh, a duplex building or or that they have a, an investment, they have to pay their mortgage. So we need mortgage relief, we need tenant prote protections. I wanna note that the Vermont judiciary under the uh, chief Paul Ryber has declared a judicial emergency. Uh, that's a good thing. So the, the everyday court hearings are not going on. Uh, one of the issues um, that they uh, have talked about are evictions. Evictions obviously uh, go through the court process, and an eviction is really a, a, a lease. A lease is a contract between you and the landlord in consideration of housing you pay uh, money, otherwise known as rent. That's a contract. And an eviction is really a breach of that contract, and you go to court and you uh, let a judge decide. And what the court said for their judicial emergency is that they're going to leave this up to any individual judge to determine whether or not an eviction is an emergency or not. Uh, I would, uh, and meaning be heard, um, I would certainly advocate uh, that nobody should be evicted right now. Uh, people need, as I said, the basics, shelter being one of them. Uh, we need to keep people housed. We need to keep people in our homes right now. We need to keep people fed. We need to keep people healthy. Uh, these are the basics. Uh, so we will do everything that we can do to continue to advocate to protect people's well-being, to make sure that they have housing, make sure that they have food, not to, not to collect unpaid debts or penalties right now. We can figure that out down the line. Uh, but let's make sure that people have uh, adequate resources, which is cash right now, um, to buy food, pay their rent, pay their mortgage, keep their fee family fed, and keep their family housed. That's what we need to focus on. That's my focus. That's how we can protect Vermonters. Uh, other questions, I really encourage you to um, ask questions. You know, one of the one of the one of the issues that uh, I've been asked, uh, not on this town hall, but uh, 
by many folks uh, is what's going on in our prisons right now. Obviously, there is major concern uh, regarding the potential. This is Jack Donovan who just walked into the screen. <laughs> Uh, he was gone. He uh, gone. There is major potential and concern uh, about a COVID-19 outbreak uh, in our prisons, given obviously uh, the living situation uh, of our prisoners uh, here in Vermont. Uh, let's start with the numbers. Um, the Department of Corrections, as of last week, had reduced their prison population, I think by 76 uh, people. Uh, the women's population, I, I believe, is down to under 100. Uh, that is all good news. And we need to continue to look at every single case uh, consistent with public health and consistent with public safety uh, to determine whether or not uh, people should be released. Uh, one of the major issues that needs to be addressed and certainly uh, we're working on uh, is housing. Always has been an issue when you talk about the prison population of people getting released. It is more so now, it in fact has been amplified the need for housing. So I know Corrections is working incredibly hard uh, to uh, look at their uh, prison population uh, and to continue to re reduce it, as I said, consistent with public safety and consistent with uh, public health. What prosecutors can do, uh, let's talk about prosecutors for a second. So we have 14 elected states attorneys in our 14 counties, independently elected, and you, of course you have the attorney general uh, who represents the entirety of the state of Vermont, but also has what's called concurrent jurisdiction um, in, in those 14 counties. And you have two different populations in our Department of Corrections. You have folks who have been sentenced, as we would all understand it, that you've been sentenced to a term of imprisonment uh, and you are currently serving that sentence. But you also have what's called pretrial detainees. What that means is this, is that you have been charged with a crime and the judge has imposed bail. And because you can't make the bail, and it could be $500, it could be a thousand bucks, it could be $10,000, um, you are currently being held um, as a detainee in jail. What I've done uh, as attorney general with my criminal division, has in, I've instructed my criminal division to review our pretrial detainees and to ask the question, do we really need consistent with public safety these folks to be held right now for the mere fact that they can't afford to get out. Uh, we only have five folks held right now from my office in terms of pretrial detainees. Uh, one has been convicted of murder and is awaiting sentencing. Another, I think the others uh, are uh, uh, charged with child luring. Uh, so that is a tough analysis to make when you have to keep public safety uh, in mind, again, consistent with public health. My hope is that by looking at the entirety of the prison population, we can get enough folks out into the community, into adequate housing, safe housing with medical care. And obviously this is all consistent on making sure that people are tested um, before they leave. So again, we're not spreading the virus, um, that you then create enough space uh, within prison uh, to allow for adequate social distancing within prison. I don't think it's realistic to, to suggest that everybody is going to be released. I think we can release people. We're looking at that. Let me say this. If you have a loved one uh, who is incarcerated in the state of Vermont and you would like me to take a look at that case, I will do that. I cannot promise you uh, that I will agree uh, to... Um, advocate for somebody's release, but I will review the case. In fact, I received a letter today uh, about somebody, about a loved one who was incarcerated, uh, and I'm going to look at it, and um, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing everything I can uh, to be fair to everybody to understand uh, that folks must feel incredibly anxious who are incarcerated right now, and we really need to ask ourselves, uh, consistent with public safety, does this person need to be in prison right now? 
And if the answer is no, and I'm sure the answer is going to be no for some cases, then the next analysis is where in the community can they go? Because we just can't open the door and say, you're on your own. We need to make sure that people have the adequate resources and support in their community if we're going to let them out. And so that's the work we're engaged in. The other thing I want to note uh, is, uh, you know, another part of this is what are called extradition warrants. Extradition warrants, and I'm sure you heard the phrase extradition on TV, I'm going to extradite you, is when somebody is pending a, a criminal charge in the state of Vermont, but is outside our jurisdiction, that are in another state and that there's a warrant out there for them and that they get picked up in another state or another country and they're held in that state uh, pending extradition, meaning pending a return by the authorities to the state of Vermont. Uh, I've asked my team to look at that. We only had two. One was in prison in Massachusetts. Uh, I ordered, uh, uh, I asked our team to ask the court, to petition the court to vacate the extradition warrant, uh, which would likely result in this individual's release out of the Massachusetts prison. We did that last week. We vacated the warrant. My understanding is that this person will be released from prison in uh, Vermont. Again, the analysis is simply this. Do these people during this public, public health crisis deserve or need to be in prison right now? Again, my view is that the answer is going to be no uh, for some but not all, but let's engage in the analysis. We are looking at our cases. Again, if you have a loved one who you would like us to take a look at, uh, please email me, thomas.donovan at vermont.gov. I think we have another question. Is there any concern about food and toilet paper continuing to flow to markets and stores? Yeah. Great question. Uh, is there any concern about food and toilet paper uh, <laughs> basically leaving the shelves from uh, the stores. So I went shopping this morning. There was no toilet paper. Hard to believe. Uh, there was no pasta. Hard to believe. Uh, there were no beans. Hard to believe. And I've never seen that in my life, as I'm sure others have not. And so there's one thing that we need to talk about here. Um, when we talk about we all have a role to play and we all have to do our part. Yes, that is social distancing and increasingly self-isolation and whether or not we'll get a shelter in place order or not. I'm not sure. My sense is we are. Uh, yeah, I have other states doing it. I want to be clear. I support a shelter in place order. We need to get ahead of this virus as best we can. And I think sheltering in place is a good public health strategy. That's my opinion. Uh, nobody else's. Um, I'm sure it's others, but that's my opinion alone. Uh, the other part we can do, we don't have to hoard uh, supplies right now. Yes, you can be prepared. Uh, we did a press conference. We did a press conference uh, about a week ago with the business community uh, and Aaron uh, Segris, who is the executive director of the Vermont uh, Retailers and Grocers, who represents all the uh, grocery stores here in Vermont, that was essentially her message, that the supply, the supply chains are solid, uh, don't hoard. Uh, there's got to be enough for everybody here. And, you know, I go back to the fact that uh, we've never seen this before in our country. And so this is going to require us to do something different uh, and to do something that perhaps some would argue uh, we've lost our way on a bit. And that's not, to, that's not to be selfish. It is okay to be prepared. I think Aaron Segrist, again, from the Vermont retailers and uh, grocers said two to three weeks uh, is in terms of uh, preparation and supplies is what you need, uh, not two to three months. Um, not sure why you need two to three months worth of toilet paper right now, uh, but that seems to be, there seems to be a run on that. Uh, so let me be clear about my role as attorney general. Um, we can look at this, but what I'm most interested in is this. 
are people being charged excessive prices for essential goods like toilet paper, pasta, or beans? If you are, you got to tell us. We need to know this information so we can act. That's evidence. You know, when you talk about, let me tell you what the consumer protection law is. It basically doesn't allow unfair or deceptive acts. Unfair or deceptive acts. So when I'm hearing things that people are selling uh, toilet paper for 75 bucks uh, or, or hand sanitizer for 200 bucks, I need to know that information. Please call us at CAP at 1-800-649-2424. 1-800-649-2424. Let me tell you what that's going to do for us. That's going to allow us, number one, um, to collect this as evidence, to see if there is a trend forming. That's going to be helpful for us. Number two, it's going to provide that evidence for us to go back to that retailer, back to that wholesaler, back to the person that has the platform uh, that this may be that this individual may be using to sell it online for an excessive amount. We can then partner with them to hopefully shut people down. Deterrence is incredibly important during this time, but I can't do it if I don't know what's happening. We need to know what's happening. When we talk about the collective good, I need a collective effort from Vermonters telling us what's happening. Call us at CAP, 1-800-649-2424, or email us at CAP at ago.cap, C-A-P, at vermont.gov. Uh, do we have other questions, Jack yeah. or Jess? <clears throat> we don't. Okay. Um, email me with questions. This is a great opportunity to get information from the state of Vermont. Again, uh, I don't have all the answers, but I can get the answers for you. Uh, and I know there's a lot of folks out there who uh, have a lot of questions. And what's critical right now uh, is giving people reliable information uh, that they can they, they can use to best protect themselves and their family. Um, and we also need to hear from you in terms of what's going on so we can do our job. And again, uh, that consumer protection, public health, public safety is probably the most critical work we can do uh, right now. <clears throat> Okay, they posted all the information. And our website, again, is ago.vermont.gov, ago.vermont.gov. Uh, that has the COVID-19 resource guide. A lot of information uh, for folks who uh, may have questions about their work, may have questions about their rights as employees, may have questions uh, in terms of uh, what their rights are, are as employers. Uh, so please uh, go to the website, get the information, arm yourself with that information, ask us uh, for help. Okay. You done? Do you have a question? No. Are you done? I'm being asked if I'm done. I'm not done yet, folks. <laughs> um, that has nothing to do. So let me just conclude by, by saying this. I hope to do these uh, two times a week, Monday and Thursday. Uh, I hope to use these as a way to hold office hours, really as outreach to Vermonters uh, to answer questions people may have uh, and to provide as much information as possible to Vermonters. Uh, and my message to Vermonters is this, use this as a resource right now. Um, and I want to say that um, let's not just view it as the Attorney General's office, but um, I can get the information that folks um, are looking for, uh, maybe a little bit quicker, quicker uh, than others. Um, and I'll do my best. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to answer everybody's question, but I certainly will do my best um, to track down whatever information or resource you need right now uh, to help your family, uh, because that's what we do best in Vermont, is we take care of each other. 
and uh, giving information uh, and resources to people right now while doing our legal work is probably the most important work we can do uh, in this time of uncertainty and anxiety uh, for Vermonters. So we stand ready to help. Uh, we stand ready to assist. We stand ready to do our job. Uh, and I look forward to working with all of you. Um, so again, uh, email us at cap at 1-800-649-2424. That's the phone number. Email at cap is ago.cap at vermont.gov. If you feel like you're getting ripped off, if you feel like uh, you're being scammed, if you feel like somebody is price gouging you, uh, you need to tell us. Uh, if I don't have the information, I can't act. Your information is a critical tool in our effort to protect all consumers in our state, which not only include uh, individuals, but small businesses. And small businesses are the backbone of this state. And small businesses need our help right now uh, during this, uh, as I said, not only this public health crisis, uh, but this economic crisis as well, because we're all in this together. I thank you for uh, joining me today. Please spread the word. Uh, I will do this twice a week or as however much that people want me to do it. Um, I'm thinking of all you. I hope everybody is healthy and safe. I hope everybody has everything they need, that they're taking care of their family, that they're taking care of their kids. I know uh, a lot's going on uh, for a lot of folks who are facing enormous challenges, uh, but uh, we've demonstrated before as Vermonters uh, that if we can come together, uh, we can rise above these challenges. It's not going to be easy. Uh, there will be tough days ahead. We know that, uh, but let's do our best to take care of each other. Uh, and with that, uh, I will uh, end my first uh, virtual town hall from my dining room uh, table. Uh, well, and I'll thank uh, my assistant, Jack Donovan, and my assistant, Jess McLeod, uh, for helping me do this today. So with that, thank you, and uh, hope to do this again later uh, this week, maybe Thursday, we'll send out a notification. Please spread the word, we need your help uh, in order to best help Vermonters. Thanks for having me.